Black holes are some of the most massive objects in the known universe. They are spheroid regions of space from which nothing can escape, not even light. Sagittarius A is what scientists call the black hole at the center of our galaxy, and it's huge. It's thought to be 4.6 million times the mass of our sun. Scientists call Sagittarius A a supermassive black hole, which is the largest type of black hole astronomers have found. We see them in the center of galaxies, and observations to this point suggest that nearly all large galaxies contain one. Besides these, there are two other types, stellar and intermediate. Stellar black holes are formed by the gravitational collapse of a star and are much smaller, about 5 to 10 solar masses. The Milky Way likely contains a few hundred million stellar black holes. Intermediate black holes are just that, in the middle between the two other types. They're too massive to be formed by the collapse of a single star, but much smaller than those seen at the center of galaxies. They could be stellar black holes that merge, they could be the result of the collision between massive stars, or they could be primordial black holes formed just after the Big Bang. Primordial black holes might also explain something astrophysicists have been wondering about for a while. They were first proposed by Yakov Zeldovich and Igor Novikov in 1966, and later studied by Stephen Hawking. Since we can't take a time machine back to the Big Bang, scientists are left with the observations they can make now. A huge mystery in cosmology relates to the origin of these supermassive black holes. See, it's long been theorized that they were once much smaller and grew by consuming the matter around them. But many recent observations suggest that this cannot be the case. Some supermassive black holes seen in the sky are so old that there wouldn't have been enough time for them to form that way. Other supermassive black holes have been found in very small galaxies and almost empty space where there isn't enough material to form them. Galaxy NGC 1277, for example, has a black hole that's about 60% the mass of its bulge. That's far too big to be formed by physicists' understanding of how accretion works. So how is this happening? A simple solution is that supermassive black holes might have actually come into existence before almost anything else. A new study from the University of Tokyo supports this idea. The authors, Masahiro Kawasaki and Kai Murai, examine if the conditions just after the Big Bang can explain the presence of very old, supermassive black holes. Since these objects wouldn't have had enough time to grow into their size, they ask, could they have been formed by fluctuations in the early universe? Theoretical physicists think that so-called density fluctuations are responsible for the structure of our universe today. See, when we look at our universe now, it is not perfectly smooth. Matter is not evenly distributed. Our Earth, for example, is about a thousand times more dense than any average point in the universe. It's thought that tiny imperfections in the early universe's density led to what we see now. If you could look at the energy density of the universe today on extremely small scales, you'd see it still isn't uniform. There are quantum fluctuations in the fabric of space-time itself. Normally, these fluctuations cancel out, but during a very early inflationary period of the universe, not all of them were able to cancel out because of how fast space was expanding. This led to areas of the universe being overdense and other areas being underdense. That results in the imperfections we see in the cosmic microwave background today. It's also thought that some of these density fluctuations could have produced primordial black holes. Kawasaki and Mirai suggest that regions with a large enough concentration of subatomic particles could have collapsed into black holes. Some of these could have eventually became the supermassive black holes we see today. This theory also explains how binary black holes have been found. Some primordial black holes could have simply became binary systems in the early universe. This study matters because it changes our perception of black holes. Maybe, if it weren't for them, we might not have a Milky Way galaxy at all. <laughs>